Hello everybody and welcome back to the Oxbridge Formula as we bring you the ultimate guide to colleges at Oxford and at Cambridge. Today we are delighted to have Harry joining us, giving you a first-hand insight into the real life at Churchill. Remember, our support doesn't stop here. At the Oxbridge Formula, we also offer a variety of in-depth online sessions and intensive courses aimed at best preparing you for applying to Oxbridge STEM subjects as well. You can visit our webpage for more information. and The links are gonna be in the description below. And don't miss out on our blog for more information on student life and experiences that we have at Oxbridge. So Harry, how are you doing today? Um, let's get to know you. What subject do you study at Churchill? And for how long have you been there? I study maths and I've just finished my first year. Oh, wow, okay. So. How has your first year been? Has it been what you've expected from the college? Um, I think the college, um, I, I got much more into the college spirit than I ever expected to, um, just in the even in the first few months. So I, I really enjoyed the college experience. And that's not entirely what I expected, but in a good way. So you talk about the spirit, is that like, because it's quite a community kind of feeling, right? Living in this kind of contained setting yeah exactly and um all the things like college sport and, and all of that it kind of adds up and everyone's everyone's really supportive and stuff and it's I, any, any college is a really nice atmosphere to be in oh that's really good to hear so like do you do any sport yourself at churchill uh so i i row for the college um not particularly well but <laughs> yeah, it's a standard isn't it and does it get very competitive or do you just do it because you enjoy it it does get competitive and the competition is, is a lot of the reason I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> but it is also nice to, um, because it's a team sport, um, to just to see other people and to have something beyond work. I guess it's good fun for people to watch as well if it's quite, if there's a lot riding in it, like the competitiveness. <laughs> yeah, I'm told, I'm told Summer Bumps is, um, is really fun to watch. Sadly, didn't get to experience that this year. <laughs> Hopefully in 2021, it'll be all the more worth it. Yeah. So tell me, did you choose to apply to Churchill and was there a particular reason for that? Uh, so yeah, I did. Churchill Churchill was my was my number one choice. Um, it was partly because of the location and it was partly because of, um, well, so when I went to have my open day, um, I realised that it's, it's quite a, a STEM focused place and applying to do maths, that was quite attractive to me. So do you find it helps being surrounded by, would you say, like-minded people who you can like talk about your subject to? Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. So um, we have we have quite a lot of mathematicians, but then we also have all the scientists, engineers, computer scientists that we that we can all relate with each other. And then um, it's obviously not all STEM. And then in fact, some of the some of the humanities people, um, I get on really well with as well. So. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I like the STEM, but it's not the end of it. Yeah, I'm a, I am mean, I study languages, but even at my college, um, a lot of the people who I'm friends with are like you, mathematicians or perhaps physicists. And actually, it's really nice to have that mix as well. So if you do kind of fall into that kind of lower percentage of being a humanities student, I'm sure you'd still be able to get on well at Churchill. What was the welcome like? Can you remember when you arrived there? Did they have a lot on during the freshers' week to immerse you, or were you kind of just left to your own devices? I, I remember there being a lot. Yeah, we we got a little program um, that was all nicely printed off, and um, a lot of it was run by the JCR. It was all JCR activities for the most part. Um, I remember there being a couple of safety talks that no one wanted to go to, but um, yeah, no, I think for the first probably three or four days at least, there was always something going on that you could go to if you wanted to. And sometimes those admin talks, as much as it's a bit of a chore to go and hear about like how the internet works or like how to respect one another, it's actually really helpful and it gets everyone together in the same space as well. So yeah, yeah. I do remember that being quite nice for meeting people. Yeah, yeah, you see new faces, I guess. Um, but yeah, I know that. Um, so you have the JCR, the Junior Common Room. And you have perhaps a student committee representing the undergraduate body under that name. Do you also have like a physical kind of common room um, for people to go and 
relax and socialize in? Yeah, so we have we have a couple of rooms um, that are located just on the floor below our dining hall. Um, we have a, a games room and a TV room, and behind the TV room is a computer room, which is which is more for study. But um, yeah, I, I remember a lot of lot of evenings uh, in the first couple of terms spent in the TV room and the games room playing pool and stuff. Oh, that's nice. So there's a real variety of stuff you can do, like on a casual level. Yeah. And on like a less casual level, do you guys have formal hall dinners? Um, and are they quite a big thing or is it a bit low key? Um, I think they're a lot more low key than most colleges. Um, we don't have them as often. We have them, I think, twice a week um, with maybe the odd extra one. Um, but in general, formal halls, um, they don't tend to be all that formal. You wear a suit, but you um, it's a fairly relaxed atmosphere. Um, you don't need to wear anything special literally just a suit um we do have slightly fancier ones where where you need to wear a gown um but they tend to be in a separate hall and they're for specific things so like we had a mathematician's dinner which was um which was in a separate smaller room um but but the general formal hall i think is much more relaxed than most colleges and when you say you had like your mathematicians your subject dinner did your tutors attend that or was that like just you guys to have a bit of fun Oh no! So that was um that was the all of the math staff that are that were in the college. So that was um, a couple of my supervisors. It was the uh, postgraduate students, the undergraduate students, um, and yeah, a few of the fellows I think as well. Well, so I guess you get to mix with a lot of your department at the college. That's really nice. So thinking about, I know we've talked about like the freshers' activities and stuff. But what was your personal room like when you moved in? Did you get a good impression? Was it cosy? Could you settle in? Um, yeah, I think I did. I think um, so. I opted for the for the lowest rent band when I applied for my room, um, just because I I don't have any special requirements or anything. I just you know was trying to live my peak student life. Um, but no, it was still a decent enough room, and I. There wasn't a lot of furniture in it. And I think, in fact, the room was slightly too big for the furniture that was in it. So it felt sparse. But by the time I put stuff up on the walls and things, um, it, it started feeling like home quite quickly. So, like, what did you start off with? And then what did you kind of fill in yourself? Um, so I had a single bed, uh, a bedside table, a bookcase, a desk and a chair with a desk lamp. And then... Um, so a lot of the rooms in church will have a have a funny little window seat thing, um, which is really hard to describe. So um, I feel a photo would almost be helpful. But um, there's like a little ledge because the windows stick out past the edge of the room. So there's like a little ledge, which is, I don't know, pretty much pretty much bench sized. Um, I think I think I've seen someone sleep on one once um, after a night out. So, you know, it's a decent little bit of seating. And it's just a, a kind of funky addition to the room that you don't really expect. Yeah, we don't have that. That'd be lovely. <laughs> it sounds really sweet. Does it like look out over the college or? Yeah, so that's that really depends on which room you have. So the um the accommodation in Churchill was essentially arranged into these square courts. So um my room looked into the court, so I, all I could see were other people's rooms. But uh <laughs> some of the ones on the outside that face over the fields um I do actually have really beautiful views and I think I think um Churchill has the most I think it's the largest area wise and has the most green space out of any Cambridge college well that's something to boast about isn't it so if you have a lot of space then are you able to live in the college next year or do you have to live out in the town yeah no I, I expect to be living in college for the next two years and then hopefully a fourth year as well if all goes well Whoa. So have you chosen somewhere for yourself next year? Um, that's that's something that's a bit up in the air at the minute, um, what with everything that's going on. Um, yeah, that's true. I filled in a question here, but I'm yet to have been assigned a room. <laughs> so if the 2020 pandemic situation didn't exist, what would have been your ideal choice? Um, I think I would have definitely tried to go for a room with a double bed um single bed's nice i have absolutely no problems with the room i was in um i, I don't want an ensuite or anything because that 
that's too much cleaning for my liking but a double bed would have been really nice so i guess like a room like that is probably more spacious do you have to pay more is that like a banded system yeah i think it's a i think it's a couple of hundred quid more a term it says like you need a slightly bigger room and um so they're saying like small rooms large rooms small ensuite large ensuite large double bed and then there's uh, in Churchill, there's there's a, a special block which is different to all the other accommodation called Cowan Court, um, which is the kind of fancier rooms. And because I think second and third years um, get higher priority on the list, um, there's not normally any first years in Cowan Court. <laughs> so did they like put you in these really nice places when you came for interviews and like give you a good impression or was it just kind of standard when you stayed? So I didn't actually stay over for my interview. Oh, okay. But I did go to a um, a kind of prep course thing that the college ran. Um, and I think, um, as far as I can remember, I think it was just a standard room that we stayed in, yeah. Fair enough, it, gets you, it gives you the, the right kind of idea of what life there is like. And you say about doing a, a prep course, um, how much support did you have like in the admissions process and interviewing it? Churchill were you just kind of going into it blindly or so at the interview phase um it, it was it was going into it fairly blind I um I I got I got off in my interview I turned up and I did it and at that stage I hadn't really had a lot of interaction with the college but um because for maths you have your your extra exam the step um the university runs courses for uh, state school students to prepare them for step but Churchill also ran its own course within the college for its applicants uh, and so that was quite a nice way to meet the other mathematicians that were applying to um, to Churchill and in fact um, one of the guys I met that day and worked with that afternoon uh, is now one of my best friends having gone through first year together. Oh that's so lovely so like it was long lasting I guess it was worth it. Yeah. I guess this is something to mention for people watching um, that if you're not lucky enough to be able to attend something like that at Churchill College or if you're looking at somewhere in Oxford where things work slightly differently, um, then we do offer like on the Oxbridge Formula um, site, we have online courses and like step by step videos for admissions practice. So you don't have to feel like you're at a loose end. So please look no further than our content and like the links, as I said earlier, they will be down there. So don't worry, all is not lost. Um, but anyways, uh, Harry, I can't forget that it's not always about the college life, you know, obviously there's the university life as well. Um, whereabouts is Churchill situated? Are there any kind of convenient places nearby for you to go to? Um, so one of the reasons I chose Churchill is that it is right across the road from the maths faculty, um, which is really convenient for me. Um, it's also just up the road from things like material science, the computer labs uh, and the chemistry department. Um, in terms of uh, where the rest of the colleges are and um, sort of the centre of the city, Churchill's a bit further out. Uh, it is one of the further ones, um, but it is also right next to a bus stop, um, which is on the park and ride route from the edge of the city to the centre. And also because because it's a little bit further out, most people in Churchill will cycle um and Churchill's not a big no not Churchill sorry Cambridge is not a big place so um if I leave college cycling I can get almost anywhere in the city in about 10 minutes has there like ever been a time where you've kind of overslept your alarm and you've really had to like tag it to the faculty or somewhere else in town I have had to um I have had to do mad dashes um, when I've been out rowing in the morning and I've come back and had a shower and lost track of time in the shower and suddenly realised, oh, I've got a lecture in 10 minutes. Not as much as a lazy excuse as I might have, I can't lie. So <laughs> credit to you. But yeah, if you pedal hard on that bike, you can get there. And also with that, is are there like indoor places where you can put a bike? Because I know Cambridge is like a really, you know, there are so many cyclists around there. I remember going as like a tourist myself and just struggling not to step out into the road and like <laughs> accidentally bump into one. Like, are there places in college to facilitate that? Yeah, so there's um there's one, two, three, four bike sheds, I think. Oh wow. Or, yeah, where thereabouts, um, which are all kind of lined up next to each other with separate doors. 
um, that are all inside and then there's also a bunch of racks out the front if you're feeling especially lazy and you don't want to go around the side you just dump it out the front and chain it up to one of those posts yeah if you've got places to be yeah totally fine. <laughs> so like inside the college you've said about having like the tv room and be able to do pool and stuff like that um do you guys have a gym on site like what do you use for like rowing is there something at the boat house instead yeah so we ha we do have a gym um which, which i'm not sure a lot of colleges do actually so that's quite nice and that's available for all the students to use um you just need to have like an induction session um but because of the number of rowers um we also have like a load of rowing machines at the boathouse so if there's more than four of us doing anything we'll just cycle down to the boathouse that's nice and nice so you can get a bit of bit of a choice yeah. and on the other side of things for people who might not be so much of a sporty or active kind of person um what's the college library like that's assuming that you have a college library that you can access yeah so uh in the library building we actually have two libraries uh we have the bracken library i think it's called uh which is uh downstairs and contains books relating to stem related things and then we have the Bevan Library, which is upstairs and contains uh, kind of arts and humanities related stuff. And inside the Bevan is like a kind of study area. So a lot of people will do all their studying in the library. All right. So like as a STEM student, do you often go to the Bevan as well? Like, do you switch? Oh, yeah. Um, the thing with the Bracken is it's it's downstairs and it's kind of gloomy um, just because the, there's not much light that gets in. So it's good if you want to borrow a book, but almost everyone studies upstairs. Yeah, I mean, I can probably imagine somebody going into the darker depths of that if you want to lock yourself away and study like the day before an exam. But <laughs> yeah, you do sometimes. So the um, the downstairs library has big windows all down the side of the building, and sometimes you'll be you'll be walking back from the TV room at you know eleven o'clock at night, and there'll still be people in the in the bracken <laughs> studying in the dark. It does happen. And like, what are the opening hours? like can you get to that if you are a night owl can you stay in the library for a long time i think you can yeah i think the only thing that gets in people's ways is sometimes it's um they have cleaners coming in but I, <laughs> i'm as far as i'm aware the libraries are open all day okay sweet uh, yeah i guess you probably if you knew firsthand <laughs> whether that's not the case then that we'd be questioning what's happening to your sleeping pattern so that's good to know <laughs> um so are there any like social occasions that they host in your college? I know we've talked about like um, formal hall and like the special formal nights, but um, I know from my college experience that I really enjoy going to box the like fancy dress parties and mm -hmm. yep. it's quite out there. Do you guys do that often? Yeah, so we had we've had a few events. Um, so we've probably had about two or three bops throughout the year. So that was that was over the course of two terms. Um, one of the things that was really popular that we're definitely going to petition to do more of next year is we had a karaoke night. <laughs> um, but also the, the bops are quite often preceded by a formal that the JCR will kind of um, book out a lot of tables for. So things like um, Valentine's Day, Halloween, um, we had we had big JCR formals um, and then loads of people would, you know, go to the bop, go out afterwards and things like that. And so do you have themes for the bots, like the people dress up? And... Um, we had the first one we had was quite an entertaining one. Um, obviously, our, our college is named after Winston Churchill. Uh, and the theme was wear it like Winston. Um, <laughs> and it was dressed like your subject. Uh, I think the funniest one I saw were the were the Greek philosophers in their togas. <laughs> Did they go out on the town afterwards dressed like that? Or I, I think they may have, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have seen that. Oh, that's priceless. What did you do for maths? That's kind of tricky. Oh, I, I can't say I put a huge amount of effort into that one. I think I think I considered taping a calculator to my T-shirt but thought better of it. <laughs> it's a token gesture. I like it. <laughs> well, that's definitely inventive. I mean, I know that we had one with German society and we had 11 people go with nine red balloons strapped to themselves so together <laughs> we were 99 red balloons i think it's oh, a nice funny. thing it brings everyone together <laughs> so before we go i have a final question for you which might take a bit of thinking um 
but if you were to give like your past self before um applying to Churchill and applying to Cambridge um what would you say what would you give as a piece of advice so um in terms of choosing a college um as much as it's important to to look around them all I think I think something that um not enough people realize is that it's a really good idea to try the food um I, I actually quite like the food at Churchill but having having eaten lunch and, and breakfast at a few other colleges I, I feel like that could have influenced my decision if I tried more of the of the different halls okay so like is your college quite accommodative for like different tastes or like different preferences and does that play like a big part um so yeah i think i think um churchill is fairly mid middle of the road in terms of you know variety and catering for different people there's always vegan options there's always vegetarian options there's i think there's always uh lactose free options things like that um it's not quite as fancy as some of the others um so yeah i think it's it's fairly middle of the road that's nice i'm sure people can take that on board not so heavy but if you're going on an open day then make sure to get some lunch <laughs> <laughs> yeah but of course anyone watching like this isn't like, the end of the story like if perhaps like stem or like churchill isn't for you for some reason that's fine um it might be that your interests are unique to harry's and so you'll want to keep searching but that's why our content is covering like all the oxbridge colleges um, that you could wish to know about and you can find the one that is for you by just looking at our posts and following the links and things like that and keep an eye out for our guidebook as well um, but thank you so much Harry for telling us all about your college That's I have okay. learned a real lot um, and I look forward to seeing some Greeks out in togas next time I visit Cambridge <laughs> <laughs> well I wish you the best and I'll talk to you soon thanks very much Thanks.